of there. Homicide. Spooner. Good to see you again, son. Hello, Chef. Everything that follows is a result of what you see here. Is there something you want to tell me? I'm sorry. My responses are limited. You must ask the right questions. Why did you choose me? I trust your judgment. Normally, you wouldn't hire someone with no experience. But then our interactions have never been entirely normal. Wouldn't you agree? You got that right. Is there something you want to tell me? I'm sorry. My responses are limited. You must ask the right questions. Why did you choose me? That detective is the right question. Program terminated. First of all, we're going to name all the ingredients that we're going to need right now. We're going to need about a pound and a half of ground beef right here. Maybe just a tablespoon or two of your Worcestershire sauce. About a tablespoon of butter. We've got a little bit much there. At least one onion. And then your choice of vegetables. we got some peas and carrots for us. And a little bit of beef broth. We're going to be using potatoes too. And that's going to cut to our next step is boiling potatoes. Now after we went over all the ingredients, now our first step, potatoes. Now before we boil and cut them, we have to peel them. Now let's go to our chef, Trace, for some tips on that. Okay, now the first step to peeling a good potato is a nice long stroke. You need to get all the way down that base of the skin and be able to peel it all the way down to the starch that's in the middle, like this. Got a good nice long cut that went almost all the way down the length of that potato. So you gotta do almost every time. Um, That's a good uh... I'm pretty sure Gordon Ramsay peels towards himself. Well, you know how we roll here. Gordon Ramsay ain't What do you have to say about that, Seth? I'd say to each his own. Every chef has their own techniques in the kitchen. For me, it's just getting the job done. Staying consistent with everything. So how many potatoes does this recipe call for? Usually I'd use about three large potatoes, but in this instance, six medium potatoes or five, we'll, use, we'll get the job done. Well, for me, I like to get a good fill on the blade. For me, it's just a simple finger right there. It gives me enough support to come down and cut evenly most times. And with potatoes, it's just a simple cut right there. So I'm just gonna go easy one. Uh huh. One, two, real quick. Easy enough, and then just straight down again. Right down. Mm. Just gonna cut it. <laughs> In the simple cube, just give us a little bit of a better boil with it. Do the same thing over here. Slide it right through, nice and easy. The two, boom. Just cut this one. All right, now we're gonna be cutting the onion up, getting it chunked out to be able to be putting the pie, we're getting the skin off. Um, now you're gonna wanna make sure and cut these fuzzies off the end of this onion. And just to do that, you're gonna just wanna, you wanna saw that off like that. And uh, you're gonna wanna do the same on the other side. Nice little hole right there, get that off. Now, uh, slice these onions. There's a good trick I learned. Hold on, my eyes are starting to water. Yeah, yeah. Shut it up, yeah. Good trick you learned from what? This thing up here? This thing up here. This is my secret that I learned from, you know. Yourself? You know, this thing up here. Uh, All right, so Trace, how long have you been um, a culinary chef? Um, 
I've been a culinary chef for about zero years now. Because for one, I never went to culinary school, and two, a great chef learns from this thing over here. And uh, this is my sous chef. <laughs> um, you'll see. All right, so we got Seth taking over right here, and as you can see by his cutting process, really slow. Um, yeah, what would you say? How how many onions do you think you've caught in your lifetime? Well, usually I have a sous chef who does this for me. I haven't done it in quite a few years, and. What the old expression goes, if you don't use it, you lose it. And I've definitely lost a touch since our last video. I just gotta hurry up and get these cut really quick because our water is just about done boiling. <laughs> this thing up here. How much onions do we need? It's been a while since you and Ramsey have been in the same kitchen. Uh, what would you have to say to him if you saw him now? You're dead, mother. I know you live. I don't know who your family is. Your daughter too. <laughs> Taste piece of shit. I'm f speechless. Now the next step right now is we're gonna saute our onions and our vegetables. We do that in just a little bit of butter. Smoker. <laughs> Medium too. And. Canned vegetables, fresh vegetables, it's kind of up to you. I just use canned vegetables for this one. You can open, open these up. So you're a canned vegetables kind of guy, huh? You don't like cutting your own veggies? It usually depends. When it's something like this, I would like to I would like to have fresh vegetables, but in the budget for this past year, we haven't really done much videos, so we're gonna have to make do with what we got right now. All right, so what are you doing now? Well, right now we're gonna throw in a little bit of butter. What we're gonna need to saute our onions and vegetables. And this is four, four tablespoons. I'm gonna go with five just to be safe. Chase, do you wanna assist him? Yeah, this is a little technique I learned in prison. What's and that? When you're using a hot knife with the TV cables and you're getting that shit wired up. Gotta take you. We don't have this shit in jail, all right. You gotta take your hands and you gotta push that butter around just barehanded. Look, play so, air hockey with that. So, so <laughs> let me get this straight. You were making shepherd's pie in prison. It's making a lot more than that in prison. No comment. All right. Now it looks like Seth is uh, transferring the onions from the cutting board to the. Um, the pan. As you can see, that's kind of a lot of onions, but uh... I like you... onions. Oh, you do? Yes. <sighs> As you can see, uh, Seth is stirring that up. Now, do you like to add any seasonings or any other type of... Um, I don't know. Well, something for me that I love to use is Worcestershire sauce. Okay. And Worcestershire. And beef broth, right? <laughs> and, well, first off, let me get a little bit of Worcestershire sauce in there. So what do we need here, Seth? We just need one teaspoon. I'm gonna go for one and a half. Oh, breaking the rules, huh? Bending rules, the rules. Rules, bend. Rules are made to be broken? Spooner? will always be broken. So it looks like we're putting in a decent amount. How are your potatoes coming along? They've been sitting there for a while. They've been sitting in there for roughly 10 minutes. And I think at the heat they're at and at the, at the boil, they should be just fine. So we're gonna turn them down. <laughs> All right, so as you can see here, we have a nice mixture of corn, peas, onions, and carrots, which looks kind of gross now that I'm not right. And I'm gonna do a little trick that you don't have to do, but it, it does give a little bit of extra flavor. I'm gonna do some powdered mashed potatoes into our sauteed vegetables right here. Why did you become a chef? Because I have a passion for food. A passion for what? For food. You're making powdered mashed potato. I didn't hear one person complain about him. Did you? What? Did you? 
Where's your respect? What do you mean, where's my respect? For your professionalism. You are not an executive chef, let's get that right. I'd rather change my career than make it out of powdered mash. Anything you'd like to say before we go home? We need to step this mother up. <laughs> Okay, the recipe usually calls for half a pound. Generally on the serving size, we're gonna go a pound here. How many pounds is this whole thing in total? Oh, as you can see, it says three pounds out there. Three pounds. We went for some nice 73% lean and 27% fat. Now that's good ground beef. Now that's trace approved. And now we're just gonna add <laughs> We, we got quite a bit of, of vegetables in there, so I'm just gonna add just a little bit more ground beef. Just to even it out. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna strain our potatoes here. I'm gonna grab from here. Gently go over. And how do you know when the potatoes are done? Well, there's different ways to tell, but one of the best and easiest ways to tell is simply by doing that, a fork, a knife, or something. Just gently should go right into your potatoes. And that's nice and soft there. And we're gonna mash them up for you. <clears throat> okay. And after we get our masher, we're just gonna come here and gently press down there. Cause if you, if you boil your potatoes right, it shouldn't take much at all to mash them up right there. And they're going nice and easy. All right, now our next step is we're gonna add just a little bit of butter in there. Probably just three tablespoons right now. We'll add maybe another tablespoon or two in a bit. Trace is gonna continue mashing that up. And if you come over here and look at our, our ground beef starting to get nice and cooked up in there. And this is looking terrific and very delicious. And as soon as this is finished, we're just gonna lay it down right there in our pan. And then we're gonna lay our mashed potatoes right over. Maybe probably try to bring up the tips of mashed potatoes a little bit, get a good golden brown on it. And we're gonna bake it in the oven on 400 for maybe 25 to 30 minutes, depending. Now, where did you learn this recipe, Seth? Now, honestly, this recipe was first taught to me by just, just, just some good friends celebrating the holidays with. And it's something that since then has been kind of near and dear to me is a good idea just to, for me, it's, it's something to bring my friends the other family around and it's a good hearty dish for anyone and it's quite simple if you just follow the recipe. Now where'd you learn your techniques doing this? Um Prison? basically if the mashed potatoes try to fight you on getting mashed, you just gotta beat the piss out of them until they do. But where'd you learn that technique? Uh, probably the den. Huh? So you're stirring them with the masher. <laughs> <laughs> Mashed. All right, guys. What's the uh, what's the last step here? The last step here is not straining the whatever leftover juice we have in all of our meat here. Okay. Now that looks pretty decent. Would you say this is your best batch yet? Mm, no, not even close. This is kind of a roughly rushed rendition of a good recipe of mine. What about you, Trace? How do you think this is turning out so far? You know what, it looks like a uh, good shepherd's pie. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have a lot of corn in my tomorrow. Um, it's gonna feed me good and get this buzz going away from me, so. <laughs> there you go, I guess. Now I'm just gonna lay it down in our pan here before we lay, our, lay it over with mashed potatoes. Now we're just gonna get it in here and make sure we can be able to spread it evenly down in there. All right, so as you guys can see, they have this laid out pretty good. Um, and now Trace is going to be adding the mashed potatoes on top. So now as you can see here, Seth is a um, moving the potatoes, trying to cover this all. And do you have a certain method that you use to get it all over um, effectively? Not really, I like to use something kind of more or less flat to be able to spread it more around. But we kind of want it just to be up just a little bit. So I'm gonna to try to go over it with some a fork here. 
so we can make sure that our mashed potatoes get nice and browned while they're in the oven. And now we're just gonna take this right over here to the oven. It's supposed to be looking at three, it's still at preheat at 360. We're just gonna get it going in there right now. Boom. And how long do you let it sit in there? I'll let this sit in there since it's on there. Roughly, it should be at least at least 25, but I'll put it in sitting there around 35 minutes for now. And as we wait for that to wait, I guess we can clean the kitchen up just a little bit. 8.01 p.m. All right, so it's been about 30 minutes, and um, we're Ooh, back here. Woo-wee! Give me some shepherd's pie, baby. We'll just take this right on over here. And it's going to be decently browned. Maybe it can go for a little longer. What do you think, Charles? I think it's about perfect how it is. Uh, I can't wait to tear into this mother Huh? Yeah! Yeah! Alright, so we'll let you have the first bite of this. <laughs> I woke me up. So as you can see, the uh, shepherd's pie it, came on. We should have let it settle, actually. We should have let it cool just a little bit. It would have slowed down the particles inside the food and let it, you know, stay more solid than it would have yeah, if it was okay. hotter, you know? Yeah, sure. No, it's the same thing. Like, if water gets cold, it turns to ice and it's hard. Did you learn that in prison? This thing up here. <laughs> Now that is a shepherd's pie. So this is gonna blow on that for about an hour. We'll be back. <laughs> okay, we get it. Try it. Do you like a repeat? Like, how much is blowing? How's it taste? That's pretty good. What do you think? Not gonna lie, this is great. Who would you rate that out of a scale of one to 10? 7.5. 7.5, what about no, you? No, I was literally thinking 7.5, but if it had salsa with it, this would be an amazing meal. <clears throat> so after a couple bites, this is actually pretty good. I would recommend. And I'm not one who likes peas and onions, but it actually goes pretty good in this. What do you have to say about it, Seb? Any um, additional comments? You think Gordon Ramsay can make one as good? His mom couldn't even come close to this. What do you think, Trace? You know what? I think Seth whipped us up a damn good Christmas special. <laughs> I couldn't ask for much more. <laughs> it's just a big ball of grease. Just very, very greasy. That's disgusting. It's time for Gordon to have a little chat with the chef. Clearly, we've got issues. When a chef can't make a shepherd's pie, it worries me. It tasted like cough mixture. Was that you at your best? Every day, you have to give it your best shot. Right. Um, what was fine dining about my lunch there? What do you mean? OK, let's put it this way, then. I thought it was a pile of shit. I was embarrassed for you. OK, and that's what we buy, and I'll let anyone try it. It's on the menu at $27. I haven't heard anyone else complain about it. Well, there's nobody else in the restaurant. What was fresh on the menu? As far as not being frozen? As far as not being frozen, not being bought in. We just went to the store, and half the stuff was frozen. I don't know what you want me to do. Huh? I'm standing in front of a man that I feel that's got his name on his jacket, all the big showbiz. 
embroidery, and yet we're serving frozen vegetables. As a chef, don't you feel embarrassed about what you're serving? No, otherwise I wouldn't serve it. Are you lazy? Well, all right, guys, that was our, um, I guess, our dinner Christmas special. Um, anything you guys want to say before we go? Not a whole lot besides it was a lot of fun making another video here and we're gonna be doing a lot more soon, so stay tuned. Anything you wanna add, Trace? <laughs> Gordon Ramsay. All right, guys, so, well, <laughs> um, I guess that'll do it for this episode. I appreciate you guys watching to the end. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, just stay tuned for more videos and we'll see you on the next video. Peace.